So in this case, I need us to consider quickly uh, this part of our voltage divider bias, uh, which is also uh, a continuation that we are going to notice from what we had in our previous class. If we were together, we managed to consider uh, the simplification when you are considering just a normal part of a common emitter. Uh, amplifier and this is where we do not have anything to be considered at the emitter we do not have any resistor that's a basic one and we do not have a voltage division and i said on this we are going to focus on the five important characteristics which are to be calculated to uh, talking of the precision method and we saw our basic equivalent circuit how it is going to be like because we just have rb and RC. So in this case, we are going to notice that there is a now a voltage divider to be considered RB and RB1. So we're now talking of the voltage divider bias. So on a voltage uh, divider, one definitely will need to know what is going to happen with this voltage division in its equivalent. Remember, I said you're going to short all the sources that you are given. And at the end, our equivalent circuit, because also we do not have any other resistor to be considered here, uh, which is RL, the load resistor that can be in parallel. So we are just going to consider RC at the output. With what? With the Z out. At the input, that is where we are going to have our Z1 for the transistor affected by what? RB1 and RB2. So that is our equivalent network, guys, that we are going to have. As we can see, uh, at the input, we are going to have ZI in this case and VI, which is at the input. And uh, this is our current in. So considering what we had, we saw that there's RB1 and RB2, those voltage division. So together, we are going to calculate these in parallel to give us RBT, this one. So this one is the total of these two in parallel, okay? That is RB1 and RB2. So this is part of our calculations. So as part of our calculations, you must consider that as part of our calculation that RBT, uh, this one is considering RB1 and RB2 in parallel. So this is RB1 in parallel to RB2. So you're gonna consider your product over sum. Then considering I1, which is at the input, it is going to be taken from the current divider rule. Remember, you have calculated this. So these ones, they are no longer part of your circuit, these ones. They are no longer there. You have calculated. So you're now considering this one, RBT now. So if you consider this RBT, you will see that at the input there, we have got ZI, okay, which is going to affect ZI, this one, which is the input impedance for the entire circuit, will be affected by two impedances or two resistances, one, RBT and Z1 for the transistor. Remember, this Z1 is for the transistor, which I said these calculations of Z1, Z2, they are for the transistor. As we calculated them before, they are not going to change the part of your Z1 and your Z2. Remember, for your transistor, you calculated your Z1 and you also calculated your Z2. These values are for the transistor only. They are not going to change. So you see that at the input, you have to consider now RBT and what Z1 to be in parallel in order for you to have what ZI. So we're going to talk about that. So talking of the current divider room, because I1, they will be affected by these two impedances. RBT and Z1. So it follows that we can calculate I1 from the current divider rule, which is for the transistor only. I1 is going to be given as, remember, you must use one that is opposite the opposite resistor. So it's going to be RBT on top. You remember your current division rule. So it's going to be RBT over what? The sum of RBT and Z1. So it's going to be Z1 times I1, which is the current that is being divided. 
So that is our current divider rule. So this part, we are going to sit. This is I1 is the input, and this I uh, this I in is the input, and this I1 is the input of the transistor only. We're talking of this part of the transistor. This one is the transistor here. Then we talk of the whole entire circuit. So in the same calculation, you see that it is going to affect all those calculations that we had before, guys. So remember, in our calculations, we said there are five major things to be calculated. So let's consider uh, the input impedance. Uh, the input impedance. So here, we're not going to take much time because we talked about this, guys, in our previous class. I said the input impedance will be affected by what is at the input. So we saw that at the input, what is it that we consider? There is R, B, T, and what? And Z1. These ones, they are no longer there because we combined them to give us what? R, B, T. So you just consider R, B, T, and Z1. They are in what? They are in parallel. So therefore, our input impedance in parallel, that is going to be what? Z1 is equal to uh, Zi, which is the input, is equal to Z1 for the transistor only in parallel with what? RBT. So that is what you're going to have, guys. So this Z1, as calculated, this is the part of the transistor only, this one. This is the part of Z1 of the transistor as calculated before. Our Z1, as calculated before, is not going to change. So please be careful on this part of Z1. This is common even from our formula sheet. We are, I told you guys we are given this. Uh, meaning to say this part is not affected. It is just going to remain as it is from our formula sheet. It's going to remain as it is. But like I said before, the ZL must be considered. Like what are you having from your circuit? What are you having in terms of what? In terms of the uh, ZL. Okay, so that's another part also that you must uh, consider in your simplification all right uh, i need this part i don't know why is it not showing me this one all right so let's see here so like i said uh the zl will be affected with what you are given there but we saw that z1 is just going to be the same so i'm not going to waste much time there uh we can move on to number two which is the output impedance output impedance so the output impedance that will be our z out so in this case considering what is at the output our z out according to our circuit is rc and what and z2 so this rc is gonna depend with what you are given uh but it's supposed to be zl and z2 but now you have to consider with the circuit that you are given so in actual sense it was supposed to be our z out was supposed to be uh z2 at the output of the transistor in parallel with what? With the ZL. But in this case, since we do not have any other resistor to be considered at the output, we're going to take our ZL as what? As ZC. So if this ZL is equal to uh, ZC, which is our RC, therefore our Z out is going to be Z2 in parallel with uh, ZC, which is our our RC, that is the, the collector resistance, where Z2, like I said before, this you have it, you calculated it before, so everything that you had on your Z2 here from your uh, common emitter configuration is not going to change, and likewise, you must consider the condition of RS, which is the resistance of the source, uh, if you are given, if not given, that will be a zero, so you'll be given a, a condition there. All right, so that is it for the input and output impedance. It's a continuation from what you had, but now you consider the circuit. As you can see, there are adjustments to be made. R, B, T in parallel. Then consider that Z in is going to be Z1 parallel to what? R, B, T. All right, on another condition, you also need to calculate, as we saw before, we talked of the current gain. So in this case, we also need uh, the current gain. So this time, our current gain is taken from the formula of the voltage uh, of the current division, where it is given as IA is equal to RBT, this part here. So it's going to be from our current division. So we take this part as it is, this one. 
Okay, so you're gonna take that part as it is. So it's going to be uh, RBT over uh, RBT plus Z1 as it is from that input, okay? Then you multiply to HF. So it's going to be HF, but remember this is for the common emitter. So it will be HFE over what? Over one plus HO. So it's gonna be HOE uh, ZL. So it was supposed to be ZL, but like I said, if you're given like a condition where ZL is equal to RC, meaning to say here we are going to write RC, but in actual sense, you are supposed to write ZL here, but it depends with the condition that you're given. So this is the part uh, when they ask you to calculate this, uh, where you're talking of what? The current uh, divider rule. That is the part of our uh, current divider rule, this one. So you must consider uh, this, this part. That is your current gain. On number four, you also need to calculate the voltage gain. They will need you to calculate uh, the voltage gain, uh, which is AV, or voltage gain. So the voltage gain is not going to change just like what we had uh, before. If you just check here, we just made adjustments on our uh, current gain from what we had before. They're just adjustments that has been made. But on the voltage gain, everything is going to remain as it is, as what we had before. So meaning to say our voltage gain is going to be given uh, from our formula. Remember, it was minus HF. Uh, then we're going to use ZL. But if ZL is uh, equal to RC, then we're going to use RC. Okay. Uh, that is HI plus uh, this is HI into that is HO minus HF E. Uh, then this is going to be HRE like this into what? ZL, which is our RC. So this part is actually supposed to be having what? ZL. But if ZL is equal to RC, then you use RC there. So that is what you're going to have. And definitely from these two, the voltage gain and the current gain, the product will give us what? That is our power gain. So we're going to have uh, the power gain, and that is our AP. So the power gain will be the product of these two with the negative. So AP is equal to minus uh, the product of the current gain and the voltage gain. So with this, you've got the uh, power gain. So questions will be, uh, circulating on this part. This is still working with our uh, precision method. All this part that we are having is under uh, the precision method. So we are going to have a conclusion uh, with some of the question papers, how this precision method can be used. And also we're gonna talk of the uh, approximation method on another class. But as you are to consider the precision method uh, working with a voltage divider, this is what you need. And definitely these are calculations as we do understand in any subject where calculations are made. The change of subject also plays a role, meaning to say sometimes you are given another part that you do not expect to be asked to be uh, to calculate that. Make that the subject, it depends now with the uh, condition of the question. The circuit diagram that you are given also here, what is the presentation? This is a simple uh, voltage divider where we do not have anything. We do not have RS. We do not have uh, the load resistor. And those are your basic questions in most cases that you'll be given. And they'll uh, ask you to calculate uh, these from the calculations uh, that I have just listed. So the formulas you have, uh, from your formula sheet, I'm just going to also let me uh, give you this part of the formula sheet. So according to our formula sheet, you have these values. You have calculated this uh, before. Only that adjustments has to be made. Like I said, your Z2 is not going to change from what you had before. Your Z1 is not going to change as what you had your voltage uh, gain is not going to change. The current gain is the one that is affected. So this part here, up to this part here, up to here, this is the part of our 
voltage division when we are working with what current division rule from here to here this is the part that you take okay and if you consider also on our voltage divider rule uh, i mean on the this this uh, part of the voltage divider you are going to consider also the, the simplification of this uh, at the output okay the z out you have to consider what is it that is there at the output just like what we had uh previously at the input as you can see this one where they are writing this one is for the uh voltage divider there was this one that we had where they are giving us rb1 and what rb2 in parallel so this whole part here represents what it represents rbt so this is your rbt this whole part that we are seeing here is your rbt so meaning to say they are simply saying it's rbt parallel to what parallel to z1 which is the z1 that you calculated before okay z1 the, the, i mean this one rbt this one rb1 and rb2 in parallel gives us what rbt and it's rbt in parallel to z1 you obtain zi so you have to consider all those stages so we're gonna say with our calculations it's not that much it's just basic questions that you need uh so we we'll see with our question papers and also our basic like questions examples that we can use so this is what you can relate and at the output like i said it's gonna depend with that part of uh, what are you having if rl is there if rl is considered this is what you have to consider you must consider rc parallel to rl then parallel to z2 but in this case that of our circuit diagram that we were having it is just rc that we have so in that case zl which is parallel to z2 is going to be taken our zl will be equal to rc remember i said when zl is equal to rc this is how you use but if rl is there it means you have to consider this one now to say zl this one is supposed to be what first you have to calculate the uh parallel of what of this of these two rc so meaning to say in that case our zl is going to be rc in parallel to what to rl that you are given once you calculate that you calculate again another voltage uh i mean another part of finding this now z or with the z2 so meaning to say therefore our z out will be what the zl that we calculated which is this one they are writing here as zl parallel to z2 but this zl is this one so it depends with the, with the one that you're given if zl is equal to rc then you're gonna use formula like that this with this understanding guys you can answer any question any question that you are given as long it has to do with the voltage division with this understanding you can answer any question so i just need us to work as much questions as we can and uh including the input like i said on the input there so this is what we had guys uh we just need to add more questions uh for our revision purposes so that it can help us till we meet again